Hey guys, in the previous video, we had discussed history through inscriptions, kings, farmers, and towns. We had talked about the pre-Mauryan age, the emergence of large states called Mahajanapadas, Magadha being the most important of all. And in the last video, I had mentioned why Magadha was so important and that it played a vital factor for the emergence of the Mauryan Empire. So in today's video, we will look into that. History through inscriptions, the Mauryan Empire. So just a little recap on what we did previously, Indian society and economy underwent significant changes during a period of 1500 years after the end of the Harappan civilization. The people living along the Indus and its tributaries composed the Rig Veda, which is the earliest known text or literary source. States, kingdoms and empires started emerging from around the 6th century BCE. More significant was the development of the emergence of new towns in different parts of the Indian subcontinent. The Mauryan Sources Previously, we have also been introduced to various sources for the study of pre-Mauryan and Mauryan era. So just to be a little precise and clear, we have the archaeological sources, which we had studied about inscriptions, mainly pillar edicts and rock edicts, consisting of 14 major rock edicts, several minor rock edicts and seven pillar edicts. Literary Sources in the literary sources section, we have studied that Indica written by Megasthenes and Arthasastra by Cautilia are important sources of information. The Mauryan Empire Chandragupta was the founder of the Mauryan dynasty in 321 BCE. He was succeeded by his son Bindusara, but the greatest and most important ruler of the Mauryan Empire was Shoka. The rise and growth of Magadha culminated in the emergence of the Mauryan Empire. Its rulers made vast territorial conquest. Chandragupta Maurya extended his empire as far as Afghanistan and Baluchistan in the northwest. Ashoka added Kalinga to his empire. The Mauryan Administration The Mauryan Empire had five prominent administrative units. Besides the capital, which is Pataliputra, the empire was divided into four provinces, each under a province or a member of the royal family. The capitals of the four provinces were Taxila, the northern province, Jaini, western province, Tosali, eastern province, and Sovnaguri in the southern province. These are mentioned in the Ashokan inscription. The military might. Maurius paid due attention to the army. Both Kautalia and Megasthenes described the administration of the army at great length. The state mentioned a large standing army which was well paid and looked after. Megasthenes mentions a committee with six subcommittees for coordinating military activity. One committee looked after the navy. The second managed transport and provisions. It arranged for bullock guards and was responsible for recruiting servants and artisans to serve the soldiers. The third committee was responsible for foot soldiers. The fourth was in charge of horses. The fifth was responsible for chariots and the sixth committee for elephants. The emergence of the Mauryan Empire is regarded as a major landmark. It was during the British rule that the colonial rulers magnified the importance of a big empire. Archaeologists unearthed many remains of the Mauryan Empire. The Ashokan edicts motivated the national leaders in the 20th century to regard Ashoka as an inspiring figure. The Mauryan Empire, however, did not last long. It lasted for about 150 years, which is not a very long time. The empire was replaced by new kingdoms during the 2nd century BCE. Moreover, the empire did not encompass the entire subcontinent. Even the imperial control was not uniform as it varied from top to bottom and region to region. Ashokan Dhamma Ashoka endeavored to hold his empire together by propagating Dhamma. The Dhamma of Ashoka was unique to the king. It incorporated many beliefs from Buddhist to Hindu thought. However, it was basically a high morale, practical and convenient way of life. Special officers known as Dhamma Mahatma were important to spread the message of Dhamma. Emperor Ashoka identified himself with the people in various ways. He projected himself as father of the people and treated them as his children with the welfare in focus. This is evident from the reading of his edicts. Brief History of the Guptas 
By the 4th century CE, some larger states emerged. The most important among them was the Gupta Empire. The Gupta Empire is rich in sources of information. The historians have been able to reconstruct the history of the empire from literature, coins, and inscriptions. The Prashastis were important sources of information. They were composed by poets in praise of kings and patrons. The poets, however, did not record accounts that were actually true, so these Prashastis cannot be taken literally to be true. The Prayaga Prashasti was composed in Sanskrit by Hari Sena, who was a core poet of Samudra Gupta. It is more popularly known as the Allahabad Pillar inscription. Samudra Gupta was the most powerful of the Gupta rulers who ruled during the 4th century CE. Coins and Coinage Now before we look into this, we will look into this particular term, numismatics. The study and collection of coins, tokens, and other coin-like objects that people used as currencies throughout history is known as numismatics. So basically, it is a study of coins and coinage. Introduction of coinage facilitated exchanges. The punch mark coins made of silver and copper were in circulation during the 6th century BCE onwards. These were among the earliest coins to be minted and used. Numismatists identified the symbol on punch mark coins and associated them with ruling dynasties. They have concluded that these were issued by kings. Indo Greeks were the first to use coins bearing the names and images of rulers. On the Mauryas, the use of currency became a fairly common feature. Money was not only used for payments but for trade by the government, also to its officers to pay in cash. A new and uniform monetary system was introduced throughout the Kushana dominions in the 1st century CE. The Kushanas were also the first dynasty to mint gold coins. The characteristic coinage of the Shaka was in silver, but the Satavanas minted coins of lead, copper, and an alloy of copper and tin. The Gupta rulers issued some of the most spectacular gold coins. The coins issued during the early years of the dynasty are remarkable for their purity. Gold coins, however, are not found in appreciable quantity from around the 6th century onwards. So we come into the last topic for the sources, that is, the question, can inscriptions tell everything? One of the best epigraphists, D.C. Sarkar, stated, there is no aspect of life, culture, and activities of the Indians that is not reflected in inscriptions. Now, do you agree that inscriptions can tell anything and everything? We will look into this right now. Limitations of inscriptions In many cases, letters are faintly engraved. This renders reconstruction uncertain. So you can use your own sense. If letters are faintly engraved, do you think that inscription will survive ravage of time and will give us full information in modern times? Inscriptions get damaged or sometimes letters are found missing in between. It is difficult to understand the exact meaning of words used in inscriptions. Meanings of words keep changing from time to time and place to place. Despite the discovery of thousands of inscriptions, scholars have as yet not been able to decipher, translate and publish them all. Many inscriptions have not survived the ravages of time. Joys and sorrows of daily life find no place in inscriptions. Inscriptions only reveal what was important and significant in the life of rulers and the administration. The life of common people are not mentioned in inscriptions. So the inscriptions alone cannot tell the whole story. We have to depend on other perspectives for a better understanding of the past. So in this sense, we have to compare inscriptions or archaeological sources with literary sources which tells us about a particular era, period, or an empire. 